Hi everybody, this is Lou McNally and this time on Made in Maine, it's a look at both sides of the world of stone and concrete. Lunaform in Sullivan is home to the only designs of their kind. Their elegant garden pots are beautiful to look at and built to last. At Gagney & Son Concrete Block in Belgrade, their products are processed, mixed, manufactured and shipped all across the state. And I'll be at Blue Rock Industries Stone Center here in Westbrook, which is the state's largest supplier of natural stone products. Form, function, and design, all coming your way this time on Made in Maine. Major funding for Made in Maine is provided by the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development, introducing Maine's quality businesses to the world. By Key Bank, committed to creating a partnership with businessmen and businesswomen to make banking work for Maine and by the Maine Manufacturing Extension Partnership, helping Maine manufacturers become more competitive by applying manufacturing and management technologies. Maine, of course, is world-renowned for its granite and for the wonderful sculptures and columns and building facades and paving stones that that granite has become. Well, nowadays, granite is becoming other items as well. You know, our quarries are pretty much a thing of the past, but uh, a couple of them are still active, like the one on Crotch Island off Deer Isle. From there, we're still getting wonderful, colorful granite, which, when polished and shaped and cut and formed, ends up like this, like this countertop right from Deer Isle, also proving to be a very popular item in the new homes market. And it's only one of a number of very functional stone items that you can find here at the Blue Rock Stone Center in Westbrook. I'm going to find out more about that in just a little while. But first, I want to introduce you to a couple of entrepreneurs, Fid Lawless and Dan Farinkoff. Now they're sculptors in their own right, but as producer Bob Libby found out, they're making some interesting items with interesting material in Sullivan. We're both uh, sort of come from the same background in that uh, we're both very interested in gardens and uh, sort of architectural pieces for gardens. I was a design student uh, sort of supporting myself through school by helping with gardens, installing gardens and uh, doing a little garden design. Uh, I was a painter for a number of years and supported myself as a painter and so you sort of tie together the architectural part with the artistic part and hopefully come out with something um, that describes how we ended up here. When we started, it wasn't really with the idea in mind that we were going to make you know, a viable business out of it. Um, that came after we got some reactions to our beginning. Um, it was more for us, you know, the interest and, you know, sort of the, the aesthetics of what we can do. Well, it's a uh, pretty humble material, which is kind of nice. It's, uh, it's concrete, sand and Portland cement. Um, it's usually used in a liquid form, but can be used uh, to hand build in a stiffer mix. Everybody in this country who makes, um, you know, garden pots in concrete is casting and it's a weaker product and we wanted to see if we could make them turning um, you know on a wheel and make a stronger product it's it's not that forgivable you have to learn the parameters and we're still learning a lot of it um, uh, we did a lot of uh, tests and you know a lot of trials and broke a lot of things and until we kind of arrived at our our sort of recipe that you know 
it's fail safe for now, but we keep improving it. These are bulletproof. <laughs> they, uh, their average wall thickness for our vases, they're uh, two inches, two and a quarter in some of the bigger pieces. They're really heavy, they're high um, strength concrete, um, and then their steel reinforced as well, so that, that really helps a lot. They're, um, they're quite strong, and they're, well, they're built um, for that reason, to withstand Maine winters or the Northeast. So that's part of the niche that we're trying to fill. Our pots, which are all hand done and hand touched and hand finished, um, most people can feel like there's something there more than um, like a mass produced piece. It's like the, the piece has some kind of energy and it will enliven um, a garden space around it. Most people who are really into gardens um, also feel it. Uh, a pot will do nothing but sort of make it more powerful. We have nine normal finishes and they range uh, from like a terracotta, like a classic terracotta shade, to like basalt stone or field stone, something mimicking these, these two pieces that are normally found in gardens. Um, each piece that le leaves the studio is um, it usually looks 50 to 100 years old because of the different patinas that we put on them. Most, most of the designers are, are really liking that now. They want a, an aged piece, something with some wisdom that they put in their garden to charge up an area. They don't want a shiny new gray concrete pot. Um, and it's a lot of fun. That's where, that's one third of each pot is those final finishes. Um, we do do custom colors. We re readily or regularly get, uh, you know, rocks and shards from other pots or, or house trim paint or all these things that we complement or, or match um, that are sent to us through designers. We make to order basically so we can make three or four pieces a week. We like the scale that we're working at now. Um, we're more than uh, one third uh, more effective if we have another person uh, and we both believe that maybe if we had two other people, we'd, we'd sort of have you know, a, nice, a nice chemistry there. Um, we probably won't move from this shop. We'll just, we might, our waiting list might get longer. I think people would wait for our pieces. Um, that's been sort of the reaction. And we'll, we'll just go along making a quality product at our pace. It's really a fun business to be in when people get so enthused about what you're doing. I mean, you know, if you are a, you know, a carpenter or an architect or something, people do, you know, oftentimes like very much what you do. But um, I never had any of the reaction uh, in my life doing anything else um, that we do um, get with this business and what we make. Um, they just gush um, when they see it. So, um, I mean, it was very surprising to us how, I mean, I had no, no real idea that people liked pots to the degree that they seem to. And the designers, um, they are very, uh, this is a very encouraging sign to us that yes, we can make a real business out of this this enterprise. The all-weather planters that are being manufactured at Lunaform are now gracing public and private gardens all around the country, not the least of which is the New York Botanical Garden. Now we're going to find out a bit more about some of the practical applications of stone with Kate Bishop right here, who's the marketing director of Blue Rock Stone Center. How are you? Great, Lou. How are you? I'm fine. This is an interesting place. You don't really think about a stone store, <laughs> but you have lots of products here. We do. We have beautiful stone here. Anything from flagstone or wall stone to interior stone for your fireplace surround, granite kitchen countertop, marble vanity, or uh, thin veneer stone for a fireplace. Uh, stone products becoming really that much more popular than they used to be? It definitely is. Um, 
this natural stone is not only a beautiful product, it also increases the value of your home and it's also a lifelong product. Now, how far away do you go to get your stone? Well, we do quarry some right out of uh, Maine. We have a plant in Sydney where we quarry some Sydney wall stone, but we also go down to Delaware and other parts of New England. So if you want to, you can come right down here and one-stop shopping, just pick out what you want? You sure can, Lou. The great thing about the Stone Center is that instead of going out and having to pick this stuff out of fields yourself, you can come in, you can select the color you like, the stone you like, and you can either haul it away in your own pickup or we'll deliver it right to your site. Kate, it looks pretty interesting back here in the shop in the uh, yard area. Anybody I can talk to over there? That would be Bill Bennett. He'll take you right through the yard. That sounds great. All right. Thank great. you very much, Kate. Thank you. Have a good day. And here's Bill Bennett in sales. How are you, Bill? Very good, Lou. Thanks for coming. Uh, you're going to have to take some of that flagstone off your hands, this stuff right behind you. I'll load your truck right off. <laughs> it looks like, you know, it, honest to goodness, it uh, matches this pile I got, uh, which I need to, you know, finish out for a porch that I'm doing. You can take all you want and pick out any stone you need. Like, you can just come right down and pick out. What is this stuff here? This is uh, Tumble Bluestone. Uh, it's a, a new product for it this year. It's uh, used for garden paths, walkways, oh, and yeah, stuff sure, like that. Yeah. You set that in there, put a little loam around there, grow some herbs in there. It's beautiful. Nice stuff. Now, what else we got here? We got uh, wall stone in the, in the corner over here. Yeah, wall stone's over in the corner. Yeah. Uh, the first three aisles is the four-inch building veneering stone for your fireplaces and oh, outside okay. walls and okay. stuff like that. All right. This is uh, the flagstone uh, walkways, right. all different types Down of flagstone, here. walkways what and we got patios. over here? Uh, concrete pavers are uh, in this section with a little more blue stone over there. Okay. We have two inch building veneering stone. What would you use that for as opposed to four inch? Well, that's actually used for just flat walls behind like a wood stove or something oh, like okay, that with sure. no corners or anything like that. Mantles and hearths? Hearths and mantles Look at stuff. That. We sell a lot of that stuff. Uh, of course, there's a lot of wood stoves and fireplaces in Maine. Sure. And uh, those are used for the bases or the mantle stock around the uh, fireplaces and wood stoves. Why so many different types of rock? Mostly because of color. Is that Most, all? Mostly because of color. There's crushed stone and natural round rocks and uh -huh. river washed rocks, and everybody's looking for a little different color or something around their bushes, around their house, or a walkway. Now, right behind us, we got the real thing. That's the real thing. That's the Blue Rocks uh, Stone Center Fabrication Shop where we make our granite and marble countertops. We take a look. Huh? Oh yeah. All I'm right. Sure. Okay. All right. Now, seven years ago, I got some granite uh, for our kitchen counter, but I had to go out of state for it. That's right. Not anymore. Why not? You got it right, right here now. We put out a full kitchen every day out of this fabrication no shop. No kidding. That's right. Now, tell me what the process is. Where do you start? Well, we start when the base cabinets in your house are set. Okay, we'll the kitchen the cabinets house. have no tops on it. No tops on it, no sinks, no anything. Yeah. We'll come to the house, do a template at that time. We meet with you and talk to you about the different locations, radius, seams, yep. cooktops, down yep. drafts, all that kind of information is done at the template. Okay. They bring that information back here, lay it out on the granite, on the granite, and then it goes right to the saw table. So with that template, you, you, you mark out your pieces like you're making a dress. That's right, correct. But it's a little bit of a different scissors, right? <laughs> Measure three times, cut once. <laughs> sure. Okay, so then you cut it up, and from there it goes to? Once it goes there, it'll go to another machine and get the edge profiled on it, the mm -hmm. holes drilled, the sinks routed out for undermount sinks that you see these sure, days. Yeah, yeah. And then it goes to the polishing racks. Now from there... Uh, from there, the, the guys sit there and hand polish it. They'll start with a, about a 60 grit diamond disc, uh -huh. and they'll work about nine pads up to about a 3,000 grit final pad to get that polish on those edges for you. And we're not talking sandpaper here. All diamond impregnated tooling in the shop. How do they tell when to change uh, pads? Uh, that's a mystery to me, Lou. I can't figure <laughs> it out myself. What they do is, as they work through the stone, they constantly blow off the water so they can see the stone dry. And I guess the scratch patterns on the stone tell the polishers when actually to switch pads. It's a real art. So it really is uh, as much an art as it is a job, isn't it? Oh, most definitely. Unbelievable. Well, best of luck in the future. Well, thanks for coming. Don't forget the flagstone. I'm loading your car, no. <laughs> I like it. All right. Here's a piece of Deer Isle granite, which is uh, going to end up uh, as somebody's uh, vanity or countertop or something within a day, too, if it's the next slab in. Now it's time to visit Gagney and Son. Here's a company which uh, manufactures and processes and mixes and ships its products all across the state. And as producer Lisa Gardner found out, it's 100% Maine made from Belgrade. My father started the business many years ago. He started in Augusta, as a matter of fact, in about 1945. I was just a youngster, but 
they started in a little garage, making one at a time. 100 blocks a day. 125 was a big day. And all by hand. I mean, you'd have a pile of sand here. You'd have your mixer and your cement. Then you'd shovel it from on the floor in here. And then you'd pull it ahead and you'd tamp it, okay? Until the block is, is fully full. And then you'd, you'd tamp it with, with the head, just like the block machine, only by hand. And after that, you'd take your scrape off plate and you'd smooth it off. And then it would, that would leave your holes into the block like you saw down there. And then you lift this up, and you go like this, and you go like this, and then the block would be on here, 45 pounds. We've been very fortunate. We started, when we started, it was very, very small. I think we had like four kinds of blocks and sand, that's about it, you know? But now it's humongous, you know? Pete's worked hard. Well, the first thing you'd have to do, I mean, uh, now I do have my own crusher. So I crush my own sand and stone and uh, to the size that I want. And then after that, you put it in your, in your, in your bin, if you have a sand bin. So you put sand on one side and stone. And then from there, it, you weigh how many pounds of, of sand and stone that you want and water. And then you mix it. And then after it's mixed, it goes up to a bucket elevator that brings the, the cement all mixed up to the block machine. It goes on to, into the, what we call the, the racks uh, with green blocks that goes into a clear, curing room to dry them faster. And we keep doing that all day long. Well, I do start around 4, 4.30 in the morning. We used to start at 3. But I'd rather do it in the morning. It's, it's a lot cooler, it's a lot, it's a lot easier on the men, a lot easier on the machine. And to me, you get more production you always get more production in the morning than you do in the afternoon. I mean, people get tired. They take pride in what we're doing, you know? And that's what it takes. It takes a team. You've got to work together. I'm always telling them, you know, you have to work together. Uh, and, and they've been with me. Most of my men inside here or in the office, and they've been with me since uh, high school, grammar school. I mean, I've got my son that that, uh, you know, looks after the, the production, the block machine. Then I have another a man, that, his name is Don Cannon. He's been with me for a long, long time, over 20 years. They're, they're the business. Without your good employees, without employees, you don't have a business, you know? They're, they're a big part of making a business what it is. I work with them. I. I I, I try to do both, but I, you know, if the owner works with his men, he gets a lot more out of them, and they'll give you a lot more, uh, because they'll follow you, they'll follow your example, and I think it makes a big difference than somebody sitting back and, and having uh, white shoes or a suit on. Or, uh, if you show that you're interested, they're interested. If you show you're not interested, they won't be interested. And that's just as simple as that. We furnished the block in Rumford for that big high rise. We furnished the block uh, for all the Walmarts uh, and the Sam stores. Those are the different molds that we have, like chimney block mold, we have septic tank mold, and then we also make uh, two by two patio pads that they use for walkway, for around swimming pools. When the economy was real good, 
we double almost every year. Oh yeah, so I started with one man and, and over here, right over here, uh, uh, if you want to count the whole thing, I think we're up to about 40, what, 48, 49. You know, in the summer you'll have a little bit more. Uh, the more employees you have working, I mean, the better it is for, for, you, for the whole economy. And we diversified in other things, as not just making blocks, we, we went into masonry product. We could see that the, you know, the economy was a, a little bit slow, so we pick up some other things and keep the people working. I think Maine is number one anyway. He would never get me out of Maine. And I think PC is the same way, and the resources here, you know. They, this is what this business is all about. The state of Maine needs businesses. It needs places for people to work. Um, I'm a great believer in manufacturing. You know, it's not everybody that has college educations, and it's too bad that, that there isn't more man manufacturing in the state of Maine. They told me there was a, what, a depression in 1982. Well, to tell you the truth, I was in the plant all day long, so I never saw it. It must have went right by me, but I, <laughs> he had to go by me because uh, uh, it, it never did affect me. You know, I think it, it, a lot of time it's in your mind. You know you stop growing because your mind's telling you, slow down. Uh, I don't want to slow down. We're back now at the Stone Center here in Westbrook, and another decorative stone that's used around is the, uh, is the marble, and this comes from all around the world. There's marble from, of course, places like Italy, which we're familiar with, but there's marble from Taiwan here, too. Let's learn more about the company from Kevin Burns, Vice President. How are you, Kevin? Uh, fine, Lo. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for having us by. Tell us a bit about how the company got started. We see a Blue Rock truck. We generally look for it, they're paving somebody's driveway, right? Well, we are into the paving business, but originally we started out by building highways. Uh, earth moving, and that started around 1920. Uh, went through the 30s and 40s, and then we got into uh, paving, aggregates, ready-mixed concrete. And uh, up until 1990, or 1980 actually, uh, most of our work was heavy earth moving. Mm -hmm. In 1987, we built this stone center for another diversification. And uh, of course, we had the, as you probably recall, we had the, uh, the recession for in a 1990. Of lean lean, there, yeah. there were some <laughs> lean years there, and after that, uh, it's been very successful, I'm very happy with what's happened over here. Those lean years have anything to do with you not doing the big earth moving anymore? Or well, is that, that, just part that of the plus, plus the fact that, uh, as you probably know, uh, there aren't too many new highways being built these days. That's uh, true. <laughs> most of it is in reconditioning, rehabilitation of existing roads and bridges, and uh, maintaining the infrastructure that we have right now. We used to dig up a piece of roadway and throw it away. Sure. We, we don't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore. We bring that material back, we recrush it. We either put it in our, our concrete or into our asphalt. So when you uh, do go out and recover a, a road or recycle, uh, how much do you get back? We bring all of it back, Lou, and re recycle all of it. We, we dribble it in very, very slowly, about 15 to 20 percent on each load. Sounds great. That and must it, be the future, then. Oh, it sure is. Sounds yeah. good. Thanks for having us by. Sounds like it's Thank getting you, busy. I'll let you get oh, back yeah. to work. All righty. Thank you. Companies like Gagney & Son, Concrete Block, and Blue Rock have been able to weather the years because they're providing us with quality materials and products that we need in everyday life. And an additional eye towards the aesthetic beauty of natural stone has allowed Blue Rock, with their stone center here, to crack the consumer market as well. And uh, an appreciation of uh, natural beauty and materials and elegance and design have allowed entrepreneurs like Dan Farenkoff and Fid Lawless of Lunaform to manufacture their garden pots in a growing business with a national reputation for excellent quality and workmanship. And it's all made in Maine. This is Lou McNally. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us again next time, won't you, for another edition of Made in Maine.
Major funding for Made in Maine is provided by the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development, introducing Maine's quality businesses to the world. By Key Bank, committed to creating a partnership with businessmen and businesswomen to make banking work for Maine. And by the Maine Manufacturing Extension Partnership, helping Maine manufacturers become more competitive by applying manufacturing and management technologies. Thank <laughs> you.